Hey everyone, it's Jared from Drumio, and I'm the author of The Best Beginner Drum Book along with my friend Brandon Toes. And today I wanna to give you five beginner drum techniques that you must know. Now this lesson is taken from the book. We have a whole selection called The Technique Selector. So if you have the book, go ahead and turn to page 118. You'll see a nice gorgeous picture there. And then we'll just flip the page and go to some of these uh, exercises and explanations. Now the first thing we're gonna talk about is crescendos and decrescendos, specifically under the umbrella of dynamics. Now dynamics are how you are speaking on the drum set. Now are you monotone? If I was sitting here talking with just as the same exact tone, do you think this lesson would be as interesting? Maybe you think it'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> you would definitely not want to listen to me talk for a long time. I go louder and I go a little bit softer. I go a little bit louder, Taylor, and then I go a little bit softer, right? This is crescendo and decrescendo, okay? So a crescendo, uh, a crescendo will start soft and get loud, a decrescendo will start loud, maybe it's on this way on your side, and get soft. Now how do we apply this to the drum set? Now there are lots of exercises in here, I, mean, I can't go through all of them, it's going to turn into uh, a really long video, so I'm just going to give you a really simple example of something that I do a lot. Now, I grew up playing a lot in church, right? And in church there is this epic build from, you know, the pre-chorus or the bridge into the chorus where, you know, every, it just opened up and became this, you know, the glorious soaring vocals and everything, and it really kind of like got the whole band going and got the whole congregation going. So that is if you're playing playing just a normal groove and then you bring your right and your left hand down to the floor tom and the snare and you do a slow eighth note build into the chorus, a one bar eighth note build. I'll show you how this sounds. So you can hear what a difference that a crescendo makes, and a decrescendo is essentially starting loud and getting soft. So practice both of these so you won't sound monotone on the drum set, all right? Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is ghost notes. Now ghost notes, although it sounds scary, I promise you, they're not. Ghost notes are simply something that are, in many cases, are more felt than heard. And I know that sounds a little bit ominous, but it's not meant to be. It's just something we do on the snare drum. You can do it on other things too, but it's primarily done on the snare drum, and it's essentially a very soft stroke. Now it has to differ from your backbeat hit, okay? So if, if your ghost notes are the same volume as the two and four hit that you're playing, they're not ghost notes. So as a rule of thumb, you could say ghost notes should be 10 times quieter or whatever. You could say five times quieter, however you think of things. But make them much, much softer than your main backbeat note. So if you have just the basic beat, let's add some ghost notes in there. Now there's lots of exercises in the book. I'm just gonna give you one here. Let's do the, the first one. So you're going to hear a ghost note on the ah of four. Let me play it. Right, you hear it sounds a little bit different. It feels different as well. And you'll notice when you play with a band, the addition of those ghost notes helps to keep everything a little bit more locked in and a little bit more grooving. Now you definitely don't want to overuse them, right? I've, I've heard drummers play some crazy beats like, uh, or I've actually played some crazy stupid beats like when I put way too many ghost notes in, something like, uh, right? That will not work in everything, so use sparingly, okay? So ghost notes, when you play them, just basically drop your stick a couple inches from the head. It's not something you don't wanna, a ghost note you don't wind up for, okay? So ghost notes are played, generally speaking, 10 times softer than your loud accented backbeat. 
Okay, so let's turn the page again. Next thing we're gonna talk about is cross-sticking. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see new drummers making with cross-sticking is, a well, there's a couple things. The first thing is they never flip around their stick, okay? It's always better to flip around your stick just because it sounds a lot better. It gives you this much more rich, full tone than when you play like this. So I know it's a bit of a challenge to flip it, but just, you know, it's as simple as that. Try and flip that stick. The next thing I'll say with a cross stick is try and put your fingers slightly down so that they're, they're past the stick. So not like this, not on top of it, but slightly on the bottom. So when the stick rests and you push down this, this uh, tip here on the tension rod, it's actually not muting that rim, right? So the cross stick, you don't wanna go too far back on the drum, it'll sound thin. You don't wanna go too high up, it doesn't sound right either. You wanna be in that sweet spot, right? And that is a good cross stick. hear a little bit of ghost notes there with that cross stick. Okay, so practice that. Get comfortable with it. Get comfortable going between the cross stick and the snare drum. Cross stick, snare drum. Oh. It's a little game you can play. Maybe try and do it like 10 times in a row without, uh, without messing it up. Okay, another thing I wanna to talk to you about Another really important technique for new drummers is the rim shot. Now, I used to think the cross stick was the rim shot, and the cross stick was not the rim shot. I learned about rim shots when I had to play a rim shot every single time, and I wish my past teachers at, the po at that time would have told me, hey, you should learn how to do a rim shot because this is what pretty much every drummer does in the studio, and it's something you really need to, to know how to do. And a rim shot is where the tip of the stick and the shoulder of the stick, or the shaft, whatever you want to say, uh, hit at the almost the exact same time in the middle of the drum and on the rim of the snare drum. Okay, you can do rim shots on anything with a rim. So a normal snare hit sounds like this with just the tip of the stick. And a rim shot is gonna hit here and here at almost the exact same time like this. Big difference, right? So here with the tip, I'm gonna go between the tip and a rim shot. And the snare sounds a lot different when you hit it as a rim shot than when you just hit it normally. So it's one of those things you wanna learn how to do so you could get whatever sound you want. So let's play a groove and let's play one with no rim shot and then a rim shot. So on the count two, we'll do no rim shot. On the four, we'll do a rim shot. And you wanna be able to do that every time on command. And that is the hard part, doing it once Great, you're a one hit wonder. Doing it over and over again means you actually really learn this technique and you can kind of do it with your eyes closed. All right, so the final technique we're gonna talk about is one of my favorite ones. You hear it a lot in pretty much almost every style of, of music, and that is hi-hat opening. And there's so many different ways and so many different things you can do. And I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna go through every single exercise in the book. I'm just gonna give you kind of a broad picture of the different things you can do with the hi-hat. So the first thing you can do is basically just open it when you hit it for one eighth note count. So let's say I open it on the and of four. So we have our basic beat, one and two and three and four and, and then I close it on the one count. So just open it for a short amount of time. You can also open it 
for the entire groove slightly or you can open them it a lot more if you're looking to get a higher level of dynamics or creating a lot more energy. Right? So actually practice doing that. So I'll start with opening it just a little bit, then open a little bit more and you'll hear how, how the sound kind of starts to fill out as I get the hi-hats a little bit more open and they're going to start re resonating more and more um, and you're going to hear how that fills at the groove. Here we go. So that is a couple of ways to open up the hi-hats. Now we have five of those important techniques. We have your crescendo, your decrescendo, we have your ghost notes, we have your cross sticking, we have your rim shot, and we have your open and close hi-hats. Now as a beginner drummer, these are some great things to get you started on the path to drumming success. Now if you want to continue to gain momentum behind the drum set, if you want to fall in love with this amazing instrument, we want to help you out here at Drumio, and we want you to get a copy of the best beginner drum book. We created this to be the best path for new drummers so you could literally get this book and go through it, page one, two, three, four, and it just gives you this perfect path to drumming success to play whatever you want on the drums. Whether you want to be a rock drummer, a jazz drummer, a funk drummer, you want to play in the studio, you want to play gigs, you want to play in your church, whatever you want to do in the drum set, this is going to help you build that rock solid foundation. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Go get your copy of the best beginner drum book today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.